So why is Bitcoin in high growth mode? Well, um, you know, mature Bitcoin over 100 years, I think, you know, kind of grows double at the rate of stocks because of all the reasons I pointed out. But high growth Bitcoin is in the next decade, you know, wh where we are now and where we'll be for about a decade or two decades. And it's growing faster than that mature rate. And that it's growing faster because of monetary inflation, global unrest. Uh, ado adoption is being driven by these massive inflation and global unrest. And so as people reallocate their capital from real estate and stocks and uh, and other assets and currencies, it's it's going to drive Bitcoin at faster than that long term rate. And so you're getting an avalanche of retail adoption. You'll get more with a spot ETF. You get you'll get more institutional adoption with clarification of the ETF and accounting rules, etc. And things like FASB fair value accounting allow for corporate adoption. So right now, MicroStrategy is really the most famous company to adopt Bitcoin as a treasury asset. But imagine what happens when Apple computers buying a billion dollars of Bitcoin a month. Or what happens if Microsoft, you know, Berkshire Hathaway has $160 billion of cash. Apple has $150 billion of cash. These, these things are liabilities. So we still have a lot of corporate adoption to look forward to. And you're talking about, you know, people that they could bring five, 10, 20, $50 billion of capital to the market. So I, I believe we'll see that kind of adoption over the next 10 to 20 years. That will uh, drive growth faster. And then when everybody understands Bitcoin as well as they understand the S&P index or as well as they understand commercial real estate, then we'll probably slow down to like a 14% or something. Michael Saylor expresses his conviction that Bitcoin is poised for significant growth over the next decade. According to his analysis, he anticipates a robust expansion, projecting an average annual increase of 21% in Bitcoin's price during this period. Beyond this time frame, Saylor envisions Bitcoin transitioning into a mature asset, surpassing the growth rate of stocks by doubling it to 14% per year. This optimistic outlook hinges on the dynamics of Bitcoin adoption. While a 7% return may not initially appear substantial compared to a 14% return, Saylor emphasizes that over the course of a century, this variance becomes pivotal. To illustrate, he highlights the distinction between an initial $1 million investment maintaining its real value and growing to $1 billion in real value. For further insights, Saylor delves into the latter part of the video, where he elaborates on his belief that Bitcoin is on track to reach a $200 trillion market cap, with the potential for one Bitcoin to be valued at $10 million. Now, over a long time horizon, laser focus is rewarded. I have laser eyes on Twitter. You can see the laser eyes. What's the point? The point is, think out 100 years. Think why? Not because you're going to live 100 years, but because thinking 100 years is clarifying. If your family had thought 100 years in advance, you know, you wouldn't be here. If your government doesn't think 100 years in advance, there would be no cities. You, if you're going to do great things, you need to look out three generations. It's very clarifying. And all of the mistakes, all the fear and anxiety that makes you do stupid things or makes you do knee-jerk things that destroy wealth and create chaos, they come about because people are thinking about three months or three weeks or three days or three years. And so my advice is, is uh, for you when you're thinking about more than four years out, think about yourself, your life, your children, your children's children. Now, if your family or your company had a million dollars, a lot of money, I grant you, but if you had a million dollars, if you invested it, <coughs> you know, in cash at a 7.5%, you know, or 7% degradation, you're going to end up with $900 worth of value left after 100 years. Your money's going away. You're going to destroy all your wealth. If you invest a million dollars in bonds at a, you know, a 5% uh, yield or a 5% pre-tax or a 3.5% after-tax yield and hold it for 100 years, you will lose 96% or 97% of your wealth. You'll go from a million to 31,000. Bonds will destroy your wealth. If you invest in the S&P index, you're just going to have the same amount of money after 100 years that you started with. You're not going to make any more. Um, if you were to split that portfolio between the S&P index and Bitcoin, 
And this is assuming 7% for the S&P and 14% for Bitcoin, and assuming 7% monetary inflation that I talked about, you're going to convert a million dollars into $512 million. It's extraordinary. And of course, if you simply invest the entire amount in Bitcoin, you're going to go from a million to a billion. It's a thousand X. You're going to double your money 10 times. And, um, and so you can see the difference between a mediocre strategy, a conventional strategy, and a winning strategy. So let me say it this way. A million dollars invested for a hundred years leaves your family with a real net worth. If you invested in the peso in ARS for a hundred years, you will have 28 cents. 28 cents. If you Whoa. invested in the US dollar, you'll have $700. You'll have a million in the S&P index of companies and you'll have a billion dollars if you invested in Bitcoin. Woo. So that's the big idea. Bitcoin is economic armor, right? I, you know, when you think about it, we talk about it. If you think long enough, it is economic order, armor. It will protect you from the economic wars to come. And, and there really isn't much else that will. Whatever you do, just make sure you don't lose the money, right? This is common sense. So when you're actually making a decision, an investment decision, you've got two things to decide. One thing is what asset do I buy? And the second is how do I custody the asset or how do I, uh, how do I avoid losing the asset? It's not enough just to buy the Bitcoin. You actually have to make sure that no counterparty steals, loses, or destroys your Bitcoin. So when you think about counterparty risk, your wealth can be impaired by the failure of any counterparty you're required to trust. And so there are three broad categories of counterparties everybody has to deal with. People, you, you're a counterparty, your family, your friends, trustees, people you trust, your lawyers, your accountants, your money managers, your employees, uh, executives at a company you work at, they're all people, right? And you have to trust them. You also have to trust corporations, the issuer of the asset, the producer of the product, a trader, a developer, the custodian, the bank, the exchange, the network. Um, it, you know, if you own a stable coin, you're trusting, trusting the issuer of the stable coin. You're trusting the network the stable coin trades on. You're trusting the crypto exchange that holds the stable coin. And then you're buying a stable coin that represents probably the dollar, which is going to lose 99.9% .9 of your money over 100 years. So it's a bad asset, in my opinion, over the long term. And you're going to have a bunch of counterparties and you have to understand them all. So keep in mind that you're always trusting counterparties. They're either people or they're corporations or they're governments. You have a building. You know, the district, uh, the district can rezone the building. The mayor can rezone the building and seize the building. The state, the province can seize the building. The government, you know, is a counterparty. The federal agencies are counterparties. International agencies are counterparties. So when you're thinking about whatever you're owning, whether it's a building or a piece of art or a bar of gold or a stock or Bitcoin or a stable coin or a crypto asset of some sort, whatever it is you own, you only are going to get the return if none of these counterparties fail you. And so first thing to do is make sure you understand who your counterparties are. The next thing you got to do is manage your counterparty risk. Over a long enough timeline, every person, every corporation, every government will fail. So Bitcoin is fueled by chaos and it's a very valuable thing. So I'll end with the point on the future, which is the near term catalyst are going to be fair value accounting, the Bitcoin spot ETFs and the halving. They're all coming. Um, the world is going to reevaluate all these assets. And what you're going to see is they're going to demonetize the other assets and shift them into the Bitcoin asset class. And as they do it, when Bitcoin replaces gold, it should 30x from where it was. And when they replace all of the other assets, there's no reason why it can't 500x. This is just a matter of education. So in summary, no country can stop inflation. 
the companies can't outgrow inflation. Workers can't outwork inflation. Few are going to beat the market by skill or luck, but everybody can buy Bitcoin. And so with that, I want to thank you for your time and just say, stay humble and stack sats. Michael Saylor outlines a vision for Bitcoin's future that is not only ambitious, but firmly grounded in a nuanced understanding of its growth potential. His projections include an anticipated average annual growth of 21% for Bitcoin over the next decade, followed by a stable growth rate of 14% as the digital asset matures. This forecast sheds light on the transformative journey Saylor envisions for Bitcoin, emphasizing its evolution into a mature asset. Saylor's compelling analogy highlights the exponential difference between a 7% and 14% return over a century, underscoring the profound impact of compounded growth over time. His bold prediction further extends to Bitcoin reaching a monumental $200 trillion market cap, translating to an extraordinary valuation of $10 million per Bitcoin. This scenario, if realized, could redefine notions of wealth and investment in the digital age, presenting a paradigm shift in the financial landscape. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.